In this video, I just want to show you what I personally use to track and analyze my dividend investments. Now, I'm not saying this is the best way or the only way, but it's just my way. And something that I feel really helps me to see where I'm at with my portfolio. I am a qualified accountant and I work as a finance manager. So creating this type of file is something that I've always done in my day-to-day -day life. It didn't always look this way, but it's just something that I've tweaked and added to over the years. And it's something that I've enjoyed building, as it shows me everything that I'm interested in when it comes to trying to grow my wealth through dividend investing. So the front screen of my tracker file has this interactive dashboard. Later on in the video, I'll show you where these numbers all come from, but for now, I'll just run through each metric that we can see on screen. We've got a number of charts and numerical information boxes on here. So starting off with the monthly dividend history chart, this shows the last three years of dividend payments that I've received each month. My very first dividend payment was this one in January, 2020. So having three years worth of data on the chart is showing my full dividend history right now. As I'm investing for the long term, this will grow much larger over time. So to allow me to compare and contrast different years, I have this feature available to zoom in on individual years. For example, if I wanted a clearer view of 2020, I can. Then if I wanted to compare my first year of dividends in 2020 with the current year of 2022, then I'm able to look at that as well. Then we have the yearly dividend history chart. As the name says, this is the yearly total for received dividends each year. Then I can also see the total amount of dividends I've received during my entire investing journey, which currently sits at £1,572.10. If you are a regular viewer to this channel, you'll know that this entire amount received has been reinvested back into the portfolio. I also have the current dividend yield for my portfolio, and I'll explain how this is calculated later on in the video. Then I have the growth rate of my portfolio, just purely from dividend reinvestment. This amount doesn't take into account any growth due to capital appreciation from the market value. It's purely how my portfolio has grown through receiving dividends and then using that dividend to buy more stocks. For example, if my portfolio was worth £100 and I received a £5 dividend that I reinvested, my growth amount percentage would be 5%. It's a metric that I expect to see grow over time as more dividends are received and then reinvested. And it's one that I really like to monitor as I find it really motivating to watch this keep increasing. I also have the top 10 holdings in my portfolio on a cost basis. So again, not accounting for any increase in market value. This is useful to me as I wanted to ensure that the ETFs make up the top four positions. And if you've seen my most recent video, you'll know I'm currently dollar cost averaging into a new ETF, Invesco's European Dividend ETF, ticker EUHD. So in time, I expect to see this enter the top five positions. I also have my forecasted dividend amounts. I'll again show you where this information comes from later on in the video, but for now, I find it motivating and encouraging to break this down into monthly, weekly and daily amounts. It's nice to see that my daily dividends could pay for that morning coffee every day into the future if I so wished. Next, we have the total amount that I've invested into the portfolio. This is just purely the cash that I've used to buy stocks with and doesn't take into account the actual market value. Then the last display shows the percentage split of stocks to ETFs in my portfolio. The ETFs currently make up 32% and I have a target to get this to 40%. The next tab I want to show is the Trades tab. This just shows all of the buys and sells I've ever made during my investing journey. I record the date, whether I'm buying or selling, the currency that I'm buying in, the name of the stock or ETF, how many shares I'm trading, the price per share, the total amount, and then the GBP conversion. I've also added in some conditional formatting so that when I buy a stock in USD, 
it turns the row blue and reminds me to take the actual GBP amount from Trading212 and add this into the file. Then if we go back to the summary tab, this just sums up all of the data from the trades tab into a summary. Here I can see how many shares of each stock I own, how much I've invested in that stock, the GBP equivalent where applicable, the average price per share that I paid, the average in GBP, again, where applicable, the dividend per share, how much in total dividends that equates to, i.e. the dividend per share multiplied by the number of shares I own, again, the GBP equivalent where applicable, and what my yield on cost is, i.e. the dividend per share divided by the average price per share that I own. To work out the GBP equivalent of the USD stocks, I deduct the 15% withholding tax, then times by the exchange rate, which is something that I have to enter manually. So the total dividends is the number that pulls through to the dashboard tab. So you might be wondering where the dividend per share info comes from, and whether I have to enter each one manually. I did used to do this, but then I decided to build a Visual Basic script that pulls this information from the Yahoo Finance website. So on this lookup tab, I just have to press this update dividends button and the script will populate the dividend per share based on the ticker symbols. So you can see this in action. It can take a little while, but it's still quicker and easier than individually looking up each dividend amount and then copying it into the file. If we quickly look at Yahoo Finance as an example, we can see that the 3M dividend is $5.96 and this pulls through to my file. Unfortunately, ETF distribution amounts aren't available on the Yahoo Finance site, so I do have to enter these manually. And I've added in some conditional formatting to turn any cells red that have a zero value, just so that I can double check that the zero figure is actually correct. I know that Disney don't pay a dividend at the minute, so this is correct. But Greencoat UK Win does pay a dividend, but for some reason, this isn't on Yahoo Finance just yet. The dividend per share amounts are then linked through onto the summary tab. Then finally, we have these 2020, 2021 and 2022 tabs, which are where I record my received dividend amounts. You can see how my total number of holdings has decreased each year. And if you've watched my other videos where I talk about my first two years of investing, you'll know that this was a conscious decision to reduce the number of holdings that I do have. My portfolio still isn't exactly where I'd like it to be, and I will likely sell off a few more positions. But I think it is definitely heading in the right direction, and my strategy has been more refined more and more over the years. These are the numbers which pull through to the dashboard and show me the monthly, yearly and total dividends that I've received. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm not trying to say that this is the only way to track your investments, but I thought it might be useful to some people and maybe provide some ideas and inspiration if you were looking to create a similar file, or modify one that you've already created. I do find that this works really well for me, and there's a saying that what gets measured gets managed. And being able to see the metrics on the dashboard really helps me to manage my portfolio in two ways. Number one, by showing me the historical actuals. And number two, providing me with the motivation to keep investing and seeing the numbers increase. It doesn't take me much time to update and add to the file. And I'm probably on it for less than an hour a month now that it's built. The reason being is that I don't have to manually enter too much information. And even when I do, it isn't that time consuming of a task. The only inputs that I have to make or to add in my buys and sells on the trade tab, entering my dividends on the 2022 tab, adding in the USD GBP exchange rate on the summary tab, 
and entering any missing dividend per share amount on the lookup tab. Everything else is automated, and it's a file that I'll likely keep using long into the future, as I continue to invest over the long term. I hope that you found this video interesting and informative, and I hope it's given you inspiration and ideas for your own personal finances. If you have, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any future videos. Also, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.